Hi, Anne Marie. I'm Dan, and we welcome welcome you to Access Miracles. Yes, we're very excited about this because we're interviewing our first non-premise person, <laughs> for lack of a better word. She's actually in our metaphysical center in Camas, Utah. And this is really an adventure for us because we don't really know her that much. Although the times that I, I have been in function with her have been so memorable that I was really excited to be able to have the opportunity to uh, bring forth her presence here and to share what she's like and how she fulfills this Christ calling that she is in, in Living Miracles community. I have a few parables of why she is that presence for me, but um, I guess the most memorable one for me is that it wasn't even so much really the words that she says, um, it's her way of being. When I landed in Canvas, Utah for, as a resident, she was sharing the house rules with me, and it was very succinct, it was very thorough. And at the end of it, she said, you know, this is your home now. It wasn't the words. It was just how she said it. This is your home now. And I felt welcomed. And I felt seen and I felt held. And in everything that she does, the thing that comes to mind for me is there's a purity of purpose in her precision. It's in her emails. It's in her communications. She doesn't talk a lot but she doesn't talk a lot unless, unless it is for a function. Oh my God, how you tie, I see you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes, and this morning while I was meditating and I was really um, joining with her in mind, I think part of the reason I'm so moved by her is because, oh my God, I'm going to lose it now. <laughs> you know, that like God is in a presence that we necessarily see but we feel God's presence. And Utah is always behind the scenes and she's doing things in tech, you know, in code. And even when she's visiting here, she doesn't really talk much. But her presence, I can feel, is just filled with love and, and devotion and clarity. So, without further ado, Dan will be asking the questions. Here's Utah. Duncan and Camus. <laughs> Hi, Utah. Hey. So, we know miracles are seen in the light. And the second miracle principle is? <laughs> miracles as such do not matter. What matters is their source, which is far uh, beyond evaluation. I know you were excited about that miracle principle. So, all our questions for this morning is going to be anchored in that. And so, we want to know, why were you excited about that, that miracle principle mm -hmm. in terms of your life and your calling? Well, I got your email and um, just reading through it, I was in prayer the whole time, just reading every paragraph that you wrote. And at the very end, you mentioned the, this this uh, second miracle principle and um, that was really the only thing in the email that really sparked me and my heart is mm -hmm. um, yeah like you said it's the the source beyond beyond the miracles that that is the inspiration for everything so that is my inspiration I want to be in touch with um, the source that inspires all the miracles. Um, I want to line my mind up with, with that because that's where my peace and joy are. So, yeah, and I feel like I've just in the past, I don't know, three or four weeks, there's just been so many miracles. And, <clears throat> yeah, I feel like my connection with the source that inspires the miracles has become stronger just in the past few weeks. So yeah, this feels really timely and very inspiring. So a brief bio about how you found yourself in Living Miracles, perhaps. 
Um, well, I guess I've been here just over four years, maybe four and a half years now. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I was studying the course very uncommittedly for a while before that, for a few years before that. And um, I, my mind seemed to get kind of overshadowed. The happiness that could have been there was seemed to be overshadowed by all the <clears throat> things in my life, like uh, living on my own and just trying to even figure that out. Um, that was tough. So, yeah, I don't know. I just found myself filling out the application for uh, coming to the community. And it was all really miraculous because one piece in the application that I remember clearly is a requirement that you should have come to a retreat or some kind of event with Living Miracles before filling out the application. But I saw that and somewhere I thought that doesn't matter to me. (laughs) I will fill this out anyway. It feels important. This feels like it's my step right now. So yeah, I filled it out and it was, I loved filling it out actually. It was like, I felt like I was just being done through. And it was received and I landed in Hawaii and now I've my life now. <laughs> had you had you met David Hoffmeister uh, previous to that at all, or was it, had you heard of him in any way? Oh yeah, I mean, I yeah. So I was studying the course, and the only teacher that I was listening to was David hmm. and others from from Living Miracles, like Armel at the time or Lisa. Yeah. 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 So, no, I hadn't met him, but I had had some calls with him. I would call him <laughs> sometimes when I was really feeling bad and needed a miracle. And uh, sometimes he wouldn't be available immediately. And I would receive the miracle anyway because I made the call. Mm. And I asked. <laughs> I asked for help. <laughs> so by the time he would call me back, I'd be like, David, I don't need you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm receiving the miracle. <laughs> <laughs> the little willingness, right? Yeah. You you had mentioned that you had a you felt that like you had uh, some miracles happen in the last mm-hmm. couple of weeks. Is there anything mm-hmm. you can share with us about that? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, um, yeah, um, I feel like the thing that kicked it off for me was a dream I had which was similar to what Kirsten was sharing in one of her Facebook lives recently that she had a dream about Jesus. And yeah, um, I don't, I don't dream about Jesus. Like I don't, I, this is not, I think like usually when I pray uh, it's more to the Holy spirit cause it's more, I don't know, you know, ethereal, like there's not a mm. form to it. So somehow my mind could connect with that more easily, but I had this dream and I was basically just spending a day with this man in some town and he was showing me things and we were walking around together and then he was helping these people in town and he was so happy. (laughs) And then um, when I woke up, I, it was just still in my mind and I thought this was different and I couldn't really pinpoint at first why it was different but it just kind of like settled in. Like, I think this was Jesus. Mm. And that really just, I don't know, made it even more alive in my mind, even beyond that. Like there was the dream and then days and now still, like this is still in my mind, scenes from that dream, like putting my face on his chest or putting his hand Mm. on my cheek. Mm. Like, um, yeah, I feel like that was a, I don't know, it was monumental in my experience, just in my journey, that dream, because, um, yeah, I feel like since that, since I had that dream, I feel like, um, like this sense of loneliness I didn't even know was there is not there mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. So, I've had this. <clears throat> now with Jesus which which is what the whole course is all about it wants us to get in touch with Jesus or the Holy Spirit have a real relationship and I feel like I, I don't know I was blessed with it all of a sudden I don't know well, <laughs> I think 
Thanks. Yeah. I think what I really love about what you just shared in that, in that is that the miracle isn't in the form. It's exactly the second miracle principle. It's about the source. Like that's what I hear for, for that parable that you just shared like that. It's the experience of it in your mind and how it's carrying you forth and form in your function day to day and feeling that kind of companionship with Christ in your mind. So, wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> 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 yeah, and I feel like since the dream, um, in my mind, my desire to, I even had this prayer, I don't know if it was before that or after that, and I'd never heard words like that come to my mind before, but the prayer that I had one night was, replace me with you. And that was wording that I hadn't, yeah, I wouldn't think of that. So I don't think that came from me, but that's, that's kind of been like my modus operandi since for the past few weeks, like, okay, like I don't really want to have any input because you, you can just work through me and everything that you will do through me will be where my happiness is. Wow. That's beautiful. So, so that, 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 that statement, replace me with you, that was, that was what you heard from Jesus. Well, I was just in meditation one, one night, just, you know, practicing my course lesson for the, for the day. And the memory, I think it must have been after the dream, because the memory from, of the dream came just back really strongly into my awareness. And yeah. Um, yeah. It was just such a desire to like, n not my will, yours. <laughs> yeah. It was I, I, that came. yeah. I really, really like that you said that because I think one of the things that is the experience of living in community is, you know, we do everyday things that everybody does outside of here, but <clears throat> it's in the doing and holding that space with Christ, with spirit that, we get to undo all our self-concepts and, you know, our preferences and, and getting really present to the undoing of the, the small self. And what I hear with what you just shared is that that's exactly what you're asking for in, in, in full measure, it seems, you know, and, and I think that's why Christ comes into your mind and your dream. And yeah, yeah, and I, I have to say, like, that's my experience of you even before this, is that there's just this, you know, I, I don't feel any kind of people pleasing in you at all. You know, the, like I said, it's just, just this precision, which makes me feel safe, truly. The experience I have with you is a feeling of safety and of love because you're not treating me as a person. So that, I feel that's the gift that you keep providing for us. For me, for all of us, actually. Hmm. There's more questions. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that this is an experience that somehow you can share with our audience? That 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 uh, in in other words, that they can actually experience for themselves, or is it just an answer to a prayer and so highly individualized that that there's no common ground necessarily that other than a deep devotion? I mean, any feelings along those lines? Mm. Well, I mean, miracles are natural. So when they don't happen, something has gone wrong. We know that from the course. So uh, I feel like the common ground is um, the desire, the mm. desire for a new way, a different way from what, we made up <clears throat> um, and there's healing to go through seemingly on this journey there seems to be you know, some kind of healing timeline that's involved but with having a desire for like authentic healing I think miracles are just waiting around every everywhere mm -hmm. every corner every under the pillows everywhere <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that you had a dark night of the soul that's made you reach out and say there's got to be a better way? 
was there like kind of a pivotal moment in your life? Uh, my whole life. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Not like even since childhood, like th there were uh, like a few years in my childhood that I felt like were just mm, really joyful. Like I just felt like I was free. And then, you know, this is the same with all of us. Something happens. It doesn't mm -hmm. even have to be anything monumental. But uh, mm -hmm. for me, it seemed like when my sister moved out, she was nine years older than me, so she was always my companion when I was growing mm -hmm. up. But when she moved out, and I didn't realize that until way later, but when she moved out, I, I was all of a sudden on my own. My parents worked all day long, and I was just on my own, having to kind of like figure out how to live by myself. Mm -hmm. So kind of like since then, life wasn't so great for me. So like there was always something mm -hmm. uh, that felt like this this doesn't feel like it's supposed to feel this way <laughs> mm. so um yeah so when when i moved to the states when i was 18 or 19 you know that's when i kind of felt a little more free to do and explore things and i got into spirituality and yeah i explored various different um spiritualities you know i got into new age and buddhism and uh, Taoism and um, healing modalities like energetic healing things like that but it just never really seemed to be of lasting interest something my interest just kind of went all over the place so yeah since I've come here uh, there's just been a real focus and um, yeah I usually can't stick with stuff I'm not one that usually can stick with stuff, but now I've been here for four and a half years or something like that. So, and it's not getting boring or like, <laughs> you know, like I need to get out of this, which is how I felt with my jobs. So, that's so yeah, that's so funny that you said. I answered the question. I don't remember what the question was. No, you did. No, you did. It was beautiful, and and <laughs> I think it's funny that you said that because when I think of you, I think you're. I think of you as commitment. It's so funny that you said you could never stick with anything before, but I mean, my, the thing that I feel for you is how committed you are. It's, it's mm. Yeah, I guess I didn't really find uh, something worth to commit to. And mm. now I, you know, once you get on the, on the, on the path with Jesus and the Holy spirit, it's like you get to experience that it works. So the commitment for that just naturally comes in. The other would, stuff I was doing before, on. just there was no place for commitment because it didn't work. Yeah, yeah. You had said that in our previous conversation uh, uh, just the other day that um, you really hadn't read the course and that this year was the first time that you're actually well, doing. I had read the course, you know, I've read the course. The workbook lessons. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> the workbook lessons were always like, okay. uh, <laughs> I got so far into the book and then it's like, yeah. No, I can't keep going. It's funny because I've talked to other people about this, like JP, for example, who I work with a lot. And I would talk to him about, you know, I just can't seem to finish the workbook. And he's like, that's so funny because when I started, I can't stop. And I'm like, huh. Okay, what is, what is that? <laughs> so, yeah, I made a commitment this year to uh, do the workbook for the first time ever. <laughs> no, I think long term resident in this community and not having No, I think it's awesome because I think that just that just exposes the fact that, you know, there is no right wrong path and definitely your devotion supersedes in my mind in my exp experience of you supersedes doing the workbook lesson at least once from from beginning to end. I mean to me you're like a work walk and workbook lesson. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, that's my experience of you. I mean, it's great that you're doing it, but I think it gives a gentleness for all of us who haven't done all the work with lessons to see that your devotion, your devotion is what the practice is. Thank you. For all of us who haven't done all the workbook lessons, yes, there you go. Yeah. Here it is. It's not about that form. There was something I wanted to ask about um, when you felt that for the first time maybe that you really started hear, hear, hearing Holy Spirit, uh, getting the guidance or, or some sort of direction. Was it a gradual thing or was it kind of immediate? Hmm.
That's a good question. I think it was probably gradual and immediate at the same time because, you know, we can all hear <laughs> guidance, but we don't really want to. Mm -hmm. So in a way, like, um, yeah, I think I, I, there were, I think, you know, before I came to community, there were certain times where it was really clear what, what I needed to do. Like, okay, I need to leave this job. I'm going to hand in my two week notice because mm -hmm. uh, it's just not working anymore. Like it's not, it's too jarring for my mind. So I switched mm -hmm. uh, careers and, <clears throat> or yeah, even with relationships, like, okay, now this is time <laughs> to end now, move on, something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I think uh, once, I think it became more apparent what guidance was once I actually came into community here. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I was getting reflections of what you're mm -hmm. hearing is also what I'm hearing. And that's mm -hmm. always really great, especially when you first start out like practicing hearing um, the Holy Spirit. It's really great when you have reflections, mm -hmm. especially ones that, that you know, seem to be on this path much longer than you. Um, for me, that was really helpful. Like, um, you know, when I first um, came into this community, I was in Hawaii in one of our properties there and Jason was there, Jason Warwick and Armel were there. And um, yeah, I was basically put in leadership position almost immediately. So you kind of like are forced into um, hearing for the whole. And um, it was, and there's so much fear of hearing the spirit. So you're not always sure if what you're hearing is, is the spirit or if it's just, you trying to control situations or mm. yeah, you're just making up stuff. Um, but it was really nice because I always had somebody that I could speak my thoughts to and then get back. Mm. Yeah, that's, this feels good like that. Mm. I'm hearing the same thing mm. or, or if not, then that's good too. You're like, mm, yeah. speak that a bit. Yeah. So yeah, I think gradual and immediate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to ask the big question. You know, there's always the Course says that you will get a revelatory experience that ends all questioning. And the question that normally comes up is how did the separation happen and why is this even, you know, you know the typical questions. Mm. So what for you has been your revelatory experience if you've had it? Mm. I feel like you have, but... Well. I explore I that I've you. had a revelatory experience the way it's described in the course mm -hmm. or even the way David describes his where you know the world just kind of peels away and you're in the mm -hmm. light um, um, but yeah I think somewhere in the course it says too that that's not really necessary like as long as mm -hmm. we're working with miracles um, we will come to an experience of peace every time the miracle is 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 seen so um but i don't think i have a lot of questions uh yes anyway um so yeah i don't have any other thoughts about this <laughs> No, I mean, I think, I think that's the thing is that because, I mean, what I hear for that is that because, and you shared it, how this week has been for you and, and I could hear the sense of fulfillment and contentment and peace that, that you're experiencing, that the questions don't even, are not even there because there's a sense of fulfillment and contentment it's just like having your dream and having your functions where you feel this intimate connection with everyone that you're working with or in function with um yeah i think this whole question comes up i mean when i think about it now is the questions come up because of a sense of loneliness or a lack of intimacy and certainly with you because of how you deal with all of us and how you serve all of us you know it's very very fulfilling <laughs> mm. Yeah, just following step by step. Mm. And then there's no questions, really. It's like, uh, well, maybe like, you know, what would you have me do now? <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything that um, 
that you would, if maybe had, we haven't asked, anything that stands out in your mind that, that you would like to share um, that might feel helpful or insightful for ourselves or, the, or our audience? Um, well, the thing that comes to mind is, um, you know, the course is a very simple curriculum, if you really look at it. Um, and the workbook is really just a piece that uh, will get you in touch with guidance, which is what it's all about. And then guidance is what it's all about. And there's no, um, no question that can't be answered with guidance. <clears throat> so... Yeah, don't complicate it. <laughs> it's a really very simple curriculum. Your love. <laughs> and God loves you. And there's nothing you can do to change it. <laughs> so get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was one thing that really came into my experience really strongly after the dream I had of Jesus that there was, yeah, just really like whatever I was doing, was just perfect and there was nothing I could even attempt to change the fact that I'm innocent and <clears throat> I think for a lot of people in community and including me it's tough sometimes to uh, like step back and just you know maybe just sit in prayer or mm. take a walk or yeah just mm. relax, listen to some music I feel like we have a really hard time with that. We're just, we just love to be in function. But I think sometimes function looks like, you know, every step back. So I think uh, since the dream, it's been more uh, relaxing for me to relax. <laughs> mm. I hear gentleness, eh? Yeah, it's just like, yeah, this is, this is just the next step now. Like, yeah. No difference between here I am like three days working straight on one of our websites because I got so inspired last Sunday about all the shows uh, <laughs> working on yeah overhauling one of our sites and it'll include some information about these shows and I was so inspired and that's what it looked like for like three days straight or maybe four mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you know and <laughs> the next day it didn't and the next day it didn't so yeah and it's all just part of part of uh, the plan. That's the guidance. Yeah. Now the pause. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, Yuta. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's a great excuse to be with you and to share you with everybody else. You know, it's a good opportunity to get to know you a little bit yeah. more. I haven't, we haven't had too much face time actually, so yeah. we're doing it two-dimensionally, so, so to speak, but yeah, it's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Love you guys. And to our audience, thank you for joining us. It was really lovely to share this sacred space with you and um, share what miracles and the source is like. So now it's everyone's experience. And I was also thinking that uh, if you have any questions and, and uh, you would like to address them to us, you can... Um, um, get in contact through Living Virtual, uh, Living Miracles Virtual, and uh, we can respond as best we can. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>